hi everyone and welcome to our webinar it's wednesday webinar or webinar wednesday as kyla and i have been calling it there's more to come with that analogy in a short moment but i am really super excited um for this webinar because we're going to be joined by dan again who joined us earlier this year talking about ai and education and we've also got Marguerite joining us live from Vegas. Um, have you seen the Vegas Dome? We'll be asking you about that and more. Um, but also we have um, on our webinar today, as you probably know, um, that uh, Dan is uh, going to be giving a prize away. We're going to be talking all about that. And also we're going to be hearing loads more about ThingLink and Skybox together. As always, please do put where you are in the chat. It's lovely to see you all. Netherlands, Switzerland, London, Dubai, Toronto, Manchester. <laughs> so many of you do keep coming and saying hello and ask questions as well. So without further ado, I am delighted to bring back Dan. Hello, Dan. How are you? Busy. Louise. <laughs> Hi, it's how are you doing? It's good to join you again. I think it was it was it back in May that we we did the last uh, webinar together. I think so. And those first webinars that we did about AI was really about trying to create a dialogue with everybody and asking them what their concerns were, what they wanted to see with um, ThingLink and AI. But generally, I think everyone was just kind of wondering what's going to happen next. And by gosh, you've been busy. <laughs> Yeah, well, I suppose it's it's just it's where AI is going, isn't it? And and people are wanting to know more and more about it and how to integrate and it, how to integrate it. And it's it's going at a fast rate as well, which is really exciting. We're starting to see a lot of the the kind of the companies that are creating some amazing technology starting to speed things up a bit, um, which which is fantastic. Uh, for us as as educators to get to to play with the the most amazing tools that we that we can to to be able to give our students a a more engaged experience and a, a, a more robust learning experience with technology. And there's certainly been a shift. I mean, when we first started seeing people join the AI classroom Facebook group, if you're not part of that group, I do advise go and join it because there's just loads of chat, which is really helpful. But people are kind of venturing out a bit more from just looking to chat gpt to other tools and particularly you know creation tools that can really help so really looking forward to discovering more as we go along uh, the webinar as well so we do we mentioned we have uh, a giveaway like we always do and someone else who is joining the team this evening is kyla hello kyla how are you i think you're on mute there I'm great. I'm doing really well, thank you. And I'm just looking at the names being added to the sheet of people joining the prize draw. So I'll let you all know at the end who um, will we'll do a sort of combined win prize draw to let you know who's won. Uh, yeah, that'd be really helpful. And uh, we discovered something about Kyla on the first webinar that we did with Dan. And that is that Kyla does the meanest Simpsons impressions. So we're <laughs> oh, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I, oh, I, I, I don't know how I how I could forget about it. And I, I, I'm kind of I'm struggling to remember how it went again. Kyla, could you give us just a bit of a, a oh, sample it was of one it? night only? I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> what stage on that webinar? Haven't done that webinar. on that webinar. But we discovered another talent because we were joking about my webinar Wednesday symbol. And Kyla said, no, that's Wonder Woman. And I said, no, it's Workaday. So some of you who are watching might remember a certain show in the 90s, uh, which was called Workaday. And Kyla knows all the lyrics to the theme tune still. <laughs> I do. And I'll tell you what, if anybody can uh, can remember those lyrics, put it in the chat. <laughs> Workaday. Yeah, it was a classic. It's here to stay, and we played Mallet's Mallet. I think, anyway. I think uh, Kyla's going a bit shy because we're because we're live now. But That's yesterday when we met, she, you oh. were straight into it, Kyla, singing those <laughs> lyrics. Uh, might have to save that for a Christmas special. Then. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to do that. Hopefully, Marguerite is not expecting us to make her do impressions as well, because don't worry, <laughs> but her Mark Simpson is just 
legendary now. Can I so, just say, so so far we've got Darren White who 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 seems to know what Waka Wave is. I've got no idea, by the way. It's Waka but we've Wave. got That's Waka it. Wave. Ah, okay, <laughs> we've got people from Ohio, uh, Italy, Arizona. They're not New Jersey. They're not going to have a clue what's going on right now. No, they're not. But everyone knows <laughs> Simpson. So I think Kyla, you're going to have to save up Marge Simpson now for later on. Yeah. So we are going to be giving away a copy of Dan's book. I'm going to post it to you because I've got two here. Um, Marguerite's kindly going to allow one of our prize winners to have a Skybox account for a year and of course we'll offer up a ThingLink teacher account. So Kyla, if you can keep an eye on those entries that will be amazing and just keep, um, yes Darren we can play Mallet's Mallet next time. <laughs> uh, thanks Kyla, we'll see you a bit later on. Um, so as always, we know a lot of people who join our webinar. Some of you have been using ThingLink for, it's 13 years old now, but some of you who are joining today, tonight, might not know what ThingLink is. So this is just a, a really nice little intro. We are hugely pleased to say that we are finalists in the European Metaverse Awards, and I'm actually going to Berlin in a couple of weeks to um, see some of the other companies that are there and talk to educators. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, and Bet this year as well uh, as a winner for the best digital learning product. But very quickly, um, we've kind of grown, as you know. ThingLink was born out of this um, idea that Ulla had um, about making things an interface for interaction. And that initially was with images, then 360 images, then video, 360 video, and now 3D models. And because we've developed this uh, path into immersive and interactive learning content creation, we've just come up with a strap line. And I think you'd all agree it is really the fastest and easiest immersive interactive learning creation suite. And we're going to talk a lot today about the way that you can be creative because of AI is reaching so many more people. And uh, yeah, we'll be going into that a little bit more deeply. But just a view of the ThingLink suite. I actually was on a, a demo today with a school in London and a teacher said I used ThingLink years ago and loved it and I didn't realize how much you could do with it now. It's it's certainly grown. And I feel like I'm I'm like in a band and I'm at a gig and there's not many people. I want so many more people to like come and see it and share it and find out what it's all about because it has grown so much. So the ThingLink editor, um, with your five tag types, you can put on five different types of media. That's the OG, um, original and the best, I think, or go as it is. And since then, we've added on a way to create branching scenarios or pick your own path adventure games. We've developed a way to create guided tours, which you have one button to click and go through sequentially. Um, a tour of a place or a space or anywhere that you might be dreaming up. Um, we've also added at the request of a whole heap of people that saw when Google deprecated the Google Street View camera app, there was not really a solution. So we were able to come up with a little bit of AI, a way for you to create a one kind of click, one swoop panoramic um, image creation with your phone, upload it to ThingLink and we'll turn it into a fully fledged photosphere for you. Um, and that was something that was hotly requested. And later on this year, we'll be launching an AR app, which means that you can have that in-person AR experience as well as other ways of using ThingLink. So just a quick round up there. But Dan, You've been so busy this year, and I've seen you speak in Florida, and I've seen you speak in a number of places. And some of the things that really jump out at educators is just the enormity of large language models. And I just wondered if you could share with us um, before we introduce Marguerite and some of the, you know, things that have really jumped out for you at all the places you've been speaking. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, before I do that, though, I think just I, like you said, I, talk, I get to talk to teachers, large groups of teachers um, all around the world at the minute, which is which is absolutely phenomenal. But I always 
I, I try to show them the latest tools, latest generative AI tools that are really making an impact. And uh, so I always talk about ThingLink because I think it's amazing how you can, how what you can do in ThingLink in terms of creating uh, immersive learning environments. And and I always say, has anyone heard heard of ThingLink? Anyone use ThingLink? And I always get so many hands up. So it's it's obviously having a huge impact on educators and 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 then on students uh, around the world, which is amazing to see. Because I think I just think um, when it, when a teacher hasn't heard of 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 what you guys do, I just think it's such an untapped gold mine there because there's so so much potential in there. Like because I was using ThingLink back when it was just kind of just the two D adding the tags and making those interactive yeah. 2d images but then when you when you guys released the the 300 360 mode that's just a complete game changer and it's a it's a great way in for any teacher who wants to have a have a, a user-friendly um place to stop grasping virtual reality and immersive learning with their students so yeah when, when i talk to teachers i am um, the first thing i do is always because there's, there's there's always like a uh, a complete mix uh, of teachers who've never even heard of chat gpt teachers who are using it on a daily basis um i always use chat gpt because i think um or i always mention chat gpt to teachers because it's kind of the tool that started off all the fuss around generative ai especially to the wider uh, population back at the end of november last year um but obviously there's so many different versions now and and different products from from different companies like google bard and so on um but yeah i think this this always struck me and i worked this out i remember i was i was given presentations on this for weeks and weeks and, I, and every time i give a presentation i thought i need to work work this out so i ended up working it out in the end and now it's a now it's a it's a part of the, my main presentation because it always delivers like a bit of a wow factor and and that is that chat gpt so if you go to chat gpt i'm sure most people who are watching this have probably used it you create a free account uh, you're using version 3.5 so it's 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 the it's that version and the amount of words worth of information it was trained on so they it, it they they spent a long time opening out training it is about 300 billion words worth of information 300 billion words worth of information now apparently we read um about 100 words every 30 seconds uh, when you read in a book now i read a bit i think i read a bit slower than that but that's probably my <laughs> that's my problem i think but uh, uh, we but apparently we read about uh, 100 words every 30 seconds and if you were to read at that pace non-stop it would take you about 2,854 years to read the amount of information that ChatGPT 3.5 has been trained on. Now, if you pay the $20 uh, per month for the ChatGPT Plus, which has some amazing features in it, um, then you're using version 4, which at the same reading rate, it would take you approximately 7,000 years to read the amount of 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 information that it's been trained on um and to put that in context seven thousand years ago we're going back to like first agriculture uh first written down languages invention of the wheel um so i think i think i don't know about you but when i first started using it, i thought what how is it doing this mm. now there's there's multiple reasons why it's doing this but i think one of them is it's just the the vast amount of information that it's trained on which which gives us amazing results so and and allows us to 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 do some amazing things with it, and and it's the same for like image generators. I know today we're talking about um, we're talking about Skybox and how to create those full three hundred and sixty degree images with inside ThingLink, um, and be, it, those models being trained on millions of different images. Um, it's just amazing, and and I think it's and I, I put this in my book as well. So whoever wins the book will get it. We'll, we'll, this, yeah, look at that. It's almost like we planned that. Uh, <laughs> it's quite a hefty thing. If if you if you're a slow reader like me, um, then it could always be used to just prop open doors around the house, uh, things like that. It's, it is quite hefty. It's uh, but you can dip in and pop out as well, which I think is really good. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thanks. But uh, in the book, yeah, we, I, I said in the AI era, we will create simply using words. Now, that might not necessarily be written words, although tools like ChatGPT 
um that's what you do but we're, we're now starting to see versions where you speak to them as well and and kind of that kind of get into that assistant territory where you speak to it and ask it to generate things and it does but it's still words it's still we still need great literacy skills but oracy skills um if you if anyone who's in the uk there's a lot of talk about oracy skills at the moment about how much oracy skills will help our students um be be ready for for the the future their future career and i think it's interesting because i don't know if you've seen this louise but um, back when kind of start of the year when people first started hearing about these tools and it still happens from time to time I think some some of us get a bit worried about them and we start to think oh well students are just going to go and get the all the answers from it and it could actually have a detri detrimental impact on their literacy skills I I think it's a false dichotomy because I think okay. if anyone who's ever used these tools and also the image generation tools as well to be honest you've got to have good literacy you need to know how to get the ideas from your head into these AI models, whether that be through good literacy skills, being able to write, being able to to speak if you're using uh, one of the voice models. Um, so I think they go hand in hand. I think AI skills are literacy skills, and I think I think it's, it's kind of at the heart of this because it it can't read our minds yet <laughs> um, so so we need to get and just like communicating with another person if we if we're if we're working if we're collaborating with another human it's, it's weird that we've got to clarify a human now but uh we we need to we need to communicate what's in our head it's probably the most difficult thing to do as a human and it's kind of the basis of a good relationship isn't it it's kind of get the basis of a good workplace that we we were able to clearly present what what we're thinking and it's the same it's the same with these tools so i think i think we as teachers have got a, a real job on our hands we've got we've got we've got some amazing um opportunities for teaching but also we've got to we've got to build that basis of these skills with our students and um i think it's exciting i think Definitely. The yeah I, th well, I don't know about you but i think it kind of and i know um we're going to talk about this further, but that kind of leveling up the the, the field of creativity, yeah. and it means that we can we can create things that we never might not have been able to, and and that's what good technology does. Like I was talking to a group the other day, and I, and I think they were a bit worried about this, and I said, well, actually GPS, you think the 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 G, GPS technology now allows anybody to travel the world and know exactly where they are and do that successfully before that it was really difficult you i mean if you were just going to go and travel the world without a gps it's quite a risky thing to do and not many people did it but that leveling up of that ability i think any any technological transformation allows what the ability of the few it gives it to the majority and i think that's what that's what we're seeing here um, but I still think, saying that, that the technical and uh, skills and knowledge around um, uh, creating art, creating music, and so on, is still vitally important because those who with the knowledge can create so much better things than than just me typing in random prompts. I think so. I, I I'm I'm excited about this, and I'm really excited to to really delve into to how that the kind of world of ai and the world of of immersive virtual reality environments are coming together because i think that's such a an exciting space to be in for sure thanks for that dan so that kind of brings us on to something that has obviously been hugely exciting for us and we announced um, officially a few weeks ago that we were launching our Skybox integration. And uh, some of you that have been on the webinars before have seen some of the things that we've been creating. And I am just over the moon to be able to introduce our guest star, which is Marguerite. Hello, Marguerite. Hey, guys. Hello. <laughs> It's awesome um, that you've been able to join us live from Vegas. How is it in Vegas? Well, I'm here because one of our investors is hosting a gaming summit conference. 
So I've actually had an amazing time with um, not doing Degeneracy Vegas, but meeting like <laughs> the creator, uh, the game designer behind Diablo, uh, behind Grand Theft Auto. Wow. Um, might not be popular with some of the educators out there, but <laughs> um, there's just the incredible legends in the game industry. And um, since I'm one of their shared portfolio companies, we get to have these incredible deep dives on the future of virtual worlds uh, was one of the sessions that we did yesterday. And I have the creator of Second Life next to me and we're brainstorming wow. on uh, these these ideas in the future. So, But also a lot of the scary AI components that I think many of us are thinking about. Um, you know, everyone's very aware that while the creativity is very excited, exciting and these new capabilities, there's also things we have to consider um, in other spaces where this could be negative and how do we prepare against that? But um, yeah. Did you get to see the Vegas Dome while you're there as well? Because I just saw a, a glimpse of, I think it was a concert that they're going to run in it. I think it was a U2 concert and that just looked incredible. Yeah, well, I'm a I'm a poor startup founder, so <laughs> if it's not prompt, it's uh it's kind of out of budget for right now. But it does look um, cool. I, I went to um, so I know the people that do the dome, and that's actually something that's on my radar for uh, once we get we should I we can we could be a part of that. But um, well, I know that's really interesting as well because somebody in the chat was saying that they've got an igloo vision at their um organization i'm not sure if it's a school or a university and that of course is where you can create your own in-person immersive spaces and of course you could use skybox to create some amazing worlds and have that both kind of vr experience but that in-person experience so i think that's really exciting but before we move on, I really just wanted to call out what you had in your bio. Um, and I took this from your LinkedIn. Um, and it says that you've committed your career to the democratization of creativity and that you've been doing that for over 10 years. And yeah, I just can't take my hat off to you enough because the fact that we've got people that can, with their words, create their own worlds, what they've been imagining, and it's just phenomenal. I just didn't think I'd see this at this time, but you've created it. And I'd love to hear a little bit more about what inspired you to do that. Well, I think, um, so for me, I've been in creative tech ever since I would say it started. So I graduated with my fine art degree in 2009. And then I started being a gallery manager uh, and it was a, a acting a fine artist, but the expenses of being a fine art as like your main income is really, really uh, unreasonable with all the shipping costs, especially if you're a large, like I, I was a large format painter. Um, and so anyways, I, I like was looking for ways in which I could be creative that maybe were less expensive um, and started using technology as a component in my art making. And with that, uh, earlier on, like 2012 and 13, uh, my house started learning about Bitcoin at the time. And so we they started using the gaming computers to mine Bitcoin. And I started thinking about, you know, it's really interesting, this idea of permissionless money, where it's if you have the string, you could just have access to this Bitcoin. So I used some puzzle mechanics to encode that into visual form, like to an art. Yeah. And so uh, if you, it's just, trans, you know, transferring the data into abstract images using mechanics and how you would reverse engineer it to get the string again. Um, so so with that, uh, and they were abstract enough that they had really fun rabbit holes, but they were also very educational. So I would do things like historical or uh, learning about actual blockchain. So some of the steps, I would, we would actually hide things on the blockchain. And uh, you'd have to, you get these little clues. So it'd send you somewhere else to get the other information. You'd come back to the thing and see if that was what you needed to get the next step. So I started this path and career as a designer, puzzle designer, turned into a game designer. The experiences became more and more interactive, uh, which led me to launching the game company. But the thing that I was really passionate about and the democratizing on the creativity side is the process in the game industry of the content creation. One, if you're working in emergent technology, it's really important for you to ship and get the thing out fast because the idea is somewhat uh, timely, but also uh, the technology is changing and evolving too. So the long 
development times that come generally with games really limits what you're able to do with your ideas in real time. Like, so you, you have to generally scope your ideas and peel them back and make a really small scope instead of the massive, really big ideas you had that, you know, are going to be impossible to build. So one of the problems we ran into is that the amount of content that people consume really limits to what sort of experiences you can build for them that will be fun and engaging. Um, I saw this opportunity with AI to unlock a co-creation process where you could build a game and the design and unlock the uh, users to also co-create with you within those game worlds, those design parameters, and build out the world with you. Um, so I know we're not there yet today, but I, I'm thinking about how all these different tools will fit together and almost like a next generation Roblox experience that we will have in the future. Um, that will be way more lightweight, way more accessible. If you see the product as it is today, um, if you've played with it uh, with the Skybox AI generator, which generates these 360 images, um, you'll it's it's really intentionally meant to be very accessible. Uh, just in the nature of my work, doing everything from really obfuscated cryptograph like <laughs> puzzles, like I, I know kind of what users are like will and will not do, uh, what steps they will go through, and so you always want it the you know the first step to be as accessible as possible. Um, for them to get excited and have that moment of wow. And uh, the 360 side of this being the very beginning of thinking about building worlds, um, being the starting point, and how fast can we get someone to just have like a, oh, wow, that was really cool moment uh, and feel successful with what they're trying to create, what's in their mind. Uh, that's yeah. incredible. Um, and I think it'd be really helpful if we just had a little look at We've got um, some of the uh, things that really started um, jumping out on us when we looked at Skybox. And Camilla is actually in the uh, chat and she's uh, probably seeing her things shown, but this is some of the first ones that we saw that came to our attention. Um, Camilla is a student and she was creating interactive study resources uh, to use with um, some of her faith studies and the uh, digital leader at her college got in touch with us and said I think you really should see this it's just absolutely incredible and we invited Camilla on to our webinar which Dan was on and then Dan you kind of took the baton from there didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was just inspired by by what Camilla had done, and kind of I was using Mid Journey a lot and animating Mid Journey images, and just kind of that's when I had that moment where I thought we we need a context here for the for images like this, and 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 Skybox. I'd use Skybox separately, and I just thought, oh yeah, of course, put them together, put them together. So it was amazing to to see that. So. Yeah, it's amazing. Can I just say as well, Marguerite? It's, I think a lot of us who who play around with these tools and 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 are into tech, uh, we we play around with this tech, but we very rarely get to see the people behind the tech. We get get the person behind the app, the app. So it's amazing to get to see the face behind such a, a, a an amazing tool and a and a well loved tool. I think as well. I think whenever um, I get to when we're talking earlier, and I was and I was I was saying I get to talk. To, to teachers around the world and whenever I show them this example and and get them to play with it themselves they they their kind of jaws hit the hit the floor really because I still think a lot of them think kind of the the immersive um XR extended reality experiences are just like a are just too far away at the moment and too complicated and it's for someone like a coder or to do it and and to be honest I was um I mean, probably about 18 months ago now, I was working in a college where I was kind of um, signing off on commissions to get tech companies to create virtual environments for us. Um, we had, someone mentioned earlier, Igloo, Igloo um, Immersive Spaces. We had some Igloo Immersive Spaces on our campuses. And we I was signing off, to, and it was costing, like, I mean, on average, about 15000 So what's that, about $18,000? Uh, per experience for us to get these bespoke made for us and 
you can pretty much do it now with this with with your technology so you're when you talk about and it was in your bio about the democratization of creativity i think um when we I don't know what what it's like for you, but when I talk about that, it just becomes like a bit of a glib phrase after a while. And and sometimes I forget the power in that, the power in actually giving to educators who don't have much time, don't have much money or resources, the ability within within seconds to create things that just this time last year, they would have had to have paid a lot of money for. Um, and so therefore it wouldn't have been able to happen is absolutely phenomenal so i i immediately jumped in and thought in fact i spoke to an english teacher and said right what are you doing with your students um soon what topic are you going to do and they're going to be doing uh to kill a mockingbird the book by harper lee uh so we we decided to to jump in and 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 create it so well, this is the the finch household that we created with um with with skybox so we we got we got it to create like the the alabama 1930s wooden house with the porch where a lot of the action takes place within within the book and then we created the characters so louise if you click on the the green icon i don't know if the yeah. sound will work but well uh, howdy there i'm jan louise but folks around here just call me scout I reckon you're here to pay us a visit at the old Finch residence. You, it's just brilliant. So you have the char- the main character of the book, um, Scout, introducing the students, and they're in that environment as well. They're with a headset on. They're actually there. I mean, what was the alternative before? Show the old movie from the black and white movie to the kids, to have the teacher explain it to them. Uh, but now they, they can actually be in that space, which is absolutely phenomenal. And also, I think one of the the underrated elements of this is the the fact that the students can can pace their own way through this. They don't have to. It's not like the thirty students in the class are just going at the same level. They can go. You can go right. Go explore for yourself. Go discover what's in this world, um, and and go see be introduced to the book yourself and and i think the fact that you've made this marguerite um um really accessible is 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 giving power to teachers um where in a world where a lot of power is taken away from teachers but you're actually putting power back in their hands so i think it yeah i think that that democratization is powerful I appreciate all those kind words, um, too, and I'm very excited. You know, it was surprising for us um, at Blockade to see the the adoption of the tool in the education sector. We were thinking game development, you know, coming from our, our industry, and and still we, I mean, we're thinking in that way, but just today, the the initial use case being so powerful for educational purposes, and then working with ThingLink, um, you, you know, we had just folks coming to us being like, we really need to use this with some of these like no code platforms that we work with. And, you know, we didn't have education plans where we could have multiple seats. And so, uh, but ThingLink was set up for that. So it was so cool to work with their team and put together the bundle of the Skybox, but with their tools and their packages. So you get the, you know, the plans that are for educators and, um, and, and be able to get this out so fast. I mean, their team was able to do the integration and have this live, I think in like two weeks, it was wild. But uh, we had a lot of users you know, tra- asking for us to do this because uh, they were already doing them. Uh, Riven, who was, I saw was in the chat, um, has done some, inc- from day one when we launched our product, was doing some just incredible um, ex- tours. Like he really pushed the limit of this no code game, choose your own adventure, like mist style, point and click um experiences and he also did additional steps to it that inspired us on the product about <clears throat> how we could you know make the images just a little yeah just the whole process the the inter- iterative back and flow has been really powerful but also wanted to mention that um my team so the team at blockade is super talented um i am a creative and i get to think of myself as the user about these experiences and these tools that i would like to have uh to help with my creative expression uh, and what would be powerful so like 
in thinking that way, though, but our technical team and our ML team, they were working in this. Some of them were working on similar immersive, what they were calling immersive diffusion um, and making waves end of last year. And they were able to join. When we started going this direction, we pulled them in and they were willing to come and join our team and help think about solving this particular problem, but making it not just the technology, but the the entire experience. So, you know, making a product, there's a lot of generative AI tools out there, like an automatic one, 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 um, and various open source tools, but how do you build it in a way that is quality is good enough. You could use it for things. You have enough control that you can feel like you can get successful, but also just the whole web experience of it. It's so simple and easy to get this access to it. Um, so anyways, it's everybody from our product design to, um, the, the ML guys there, it's been pretty fun. And that, I think I, I've kind of got got to watch that. I know we were talking before we went live, and, and I was saying I've been using this from very early on in the year, um, which which is crazy because I mean it's just a few months ago, but I think in the world of generative AI, it's a long, long time. And and to see every time I went back to the tool, because I, I'd be demoing this tool around the world to different teachers, and so I would be going in very regularly to show teachers how to use it. And every time I go back in the There'd be some, there'd be something new. Oh. That I, I remember one time going in, and all of a sudden you could draw your own background and have the the generation match your drawn, and and every time I went in, it was there was something new added, new styles added. So it's, it's I think it's an amazing testament to, to your team the fact that they're they're obviously working their hearts out on on this tool. And there'll be some new features coming that will be exciting. So. Uh, currently today when you generate, maybe like you love it, but there was just one area that wasn't really fitting, you know, what you were going for. And so how do you have more control and iterating on your workflow here? So like an in-painting sort of sectional area where you can modify a certain area. Um, and then, and then also like the sketches, like for me, I get really frustrated when I spend like an hour on a sketch and I want to play with it, but it's not saved. Mm -hmm. So there's like little qual quality of life things that we're going to be focusing on in the next month or so. Um, and also we just released a, a big update to the API. So we have the like Unity SDK and the Unreal, um, we have an Unreal plugin, but those, those spaces are like really great for the game developers. But when we're talking about this no code experience, it's really important that the the front facing web app, the 360 editor is very usable for you to uh, be feel successful. So I'm really excited for what we'll have out throughout the end of the year, including moving into 3D. Um, so we were talking about before, you can even create more of an immersion. Um, and 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 how will we do that or unlock that? So with the various- That's, That yeah. really excites me because I think <laughs> at the minute that kind of, what we're, what a lot of people are doing with these tools are almost hacks. Like we're trying to hack these tools to get the most out of them, even before they, they've reached their like kind of pinnacle usability and before they they've become like the products they're gonna become um and it's amazing to see that the features that you're gonna have but I think putting like the video like my example there of to kill a mockingbird that was a, it was an image created with mid journey a, a text to image generator uh, animated with another tool called DID and so on and it and it was it's almost like a hack to try and get interactive content within you the amazing uh, 3D spaces that that Skybox generates. But the fact that you're going to, like you're saying, allow kind of the, the 3D interactivity to be inbuilt within Skyboxes is, I think, will be a, a game changer. And I can't wait for to see that feature released. There's just so much love in the chat. Everyone's just coming out with so many lovely comments. And I've been trying to demo different examples whilst you've been talking as well. Um, and just to give a little bit of context to this one, this was the uh, example I made of George Orwell's 1984. But in the, um, the info tag, which uh, you'll be able to see there, I was able to put some of the enhanced prompts that Skybox came back with. And a teacher instantly has vocabulary lists and other kind of project ideas and things to explore. And if we're encouraging young people to demonstrate some of the prompts they've been using and demonstrate how their thinking processes have been, then yeah, this is a, just a, a fantastic way to do it. I know a few people have asked us if we can do a live demo. So should we do a live demo of the uh, Skybox integration? If I just click 
on this tab and share this tab um, now. Uh, some of you who use ThingLink already will have seen this screen. Um, this is the, the integrations that we have, and we can add the Skybox one in. So I'm just going to click the Skybox uh, icon there, and we have this additional pop-up window. Obviously, it's a lighter version that you would get if you went directly to Skybox because you'll be able to see negative prompts and uh, words that you don't want to use, for example. But as you can imagine, you know, we're hoping that this is just going to get better and better. This is like the kind of day one experience, if you like. So, Dan, uh, do you have a prompt? Oh, I didn't realize you were going to put me on the spot like this. <laughs> I think we can have a little play with this before. <laughs> but we were thinking of, uh, you know, like a book. Um, yes. That might be um, suitable that an educator might want to bring to life, something that is known and loved uh, globally. I've just I've just remembered I did know you were going to put me on the spot like this and, and we rehearsed it yesterday so uh, <laughs> uh, yes oh yes I do have an idea Louise um, why don't we <laughs> uh, no we yeah we were playing around with this yesterday weren't we and um, we were Charlie we... in the chocolate factory and rivers of chocolate wasn't very aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> But um, we did do, because we're big raw doll fans, and my daughter's called Matilda as well, which we actually named after the after the character, um, we decided to look at uh, the the school within within the book Matilda, didn't we, and see if we could re recreate the classroom at Truncheon Hall. So what was the best prompts that we could put in? I just put Matilda, roll doll, which I've spelt wrong, um, and then there was the kind of gloomy classroom, wasn't there? But, uh, yeah, gloomy, uh, old-fashioned classroom, maybe. Uh, old-fashioned, yeah, that's a, a good one. And then what would be the kind of style that we want to uh, choose for that particular... Should we have a look through them? What, what yeah, are so we've got so many styles, Marguerite. I think what we're going to have to do next is come up with a, a nice descriptor and some examples in action for every different style pack because you keep... Uh, launching new versions which is just incredible so how about a uh, scenic or realistic or interior views or you choose let's marguerite, go for what's your favorite style marguerite or can you Ooh, you, um, you have to say all of them <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, psychedelic illustration, and then uh, one of them that's always cool is the um, it's the uh the digital one. What's it? It starts with the M. I think it's not the but Well, you can do digital painting. That's pretty. Digital painting. Okay, uh, yeah. and then easy as you just click generate, and it's kind of working its magic here. And it, I haven't seen it go further than like twenty seconds before it's created that uh, skybox for you. And you can see the text has already changed to Matilda inspired, inspired gloomy antique style classroom in VR 360, desks in higgledy piggledy rows, chalkboard dominating view. So I'm just going to, as well, I'm going to cut that um, out of there so I can copy it. And really, it's almost have, like it's read our minds, really, that the yeah, enhanced And here feature. we have this kind of rather dusty, gloomy, uninspiring classroom. So we can hit continue and then that is directly into your ThingLink um, editor experience where now you're able to add your tags. Um, I'm just going to go to settings and uh, paste that description in there and click done. So now we already have our uh, vocab lists or our prompts or our demonstrations. My dog's just whining. She never usually does that. That's Tallulah. <laughs> <laughs> but what's also quite fun here is that we do have an AI built in here so it can generate your tags for you just as a way of kind of getting you started. So if we put in that our project is about Matilda um, rolled uh, doll can see what it comes up with click continue so that's a, a really cool way of <laughs> starting and that's just processing there and there we have it so we have some lovely tags all about matilda with roll doll you'll be able to change your 
icons. We now have an icon color creator as well. So you could pick your icon and then choose your color scheme of icons to go with it. And that's as hard as it gets. So if I click done there and then done again, that's your scene ready to share. I mean, that's just super easy to do, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that was what, 30 seconds to a minute? Seconds. And of course, once you've created this, you can click the privacy settings just to make sure that you can share it either in your school or in your class or share it externally. And then you've got the options where you can embed it on a website. So you could put it in something like a Google site or attach it as a material in a Google Classroom. You could even have a folder with your students and put that in and they could clone it and then create their own tags. What's cool there is that you can also view in VR with that example there as well, which uh, gives you all of those options. So very, very quickly, uh, how to generate Skybox. And like we said, it's only just going to get better and better. Yeah, we, we're getting questions about, is this available right now? Yes, this is available right now. So if you are already a Skybox um fan you can uh go over to skybox you can it's, it's free generations 15 generations a month people can create their own account can't they marguerite yes and and the 360 editor that we have um so i don't know if you want to click the try skybox or the conjure your world yeah, yeah. button but um when you're in the 360 editor we have additional tools like sketching and remixing that I'm sure, Louise, at some point you guys will have this, but you're, you've got that up so fast. Um, <laughs> and the capabilities of the additional tools we'll have and like like I said, the editing, being able to iterate on your skyboxes, uh, you can do with us an export. Um, so you could also create with us an export and bring over to ThingLink. Um, but the but ThingLink has the really great packages for the for the education plans to use their tools that, um, that make a lot of sense for the classroom or um, other organizations. But um and that's where we kind of felt that it was really good to develop the partnership and it was actually you know a few schools that got in touch with us saying we've got these amazing examples of skybox in action and because obviously with thinglink you've got your kind of school account where teachers have got confidence that it's gdpr compliant or copper or FERPA, and they can manage their students that you can then apply Skybox for every person, whether they're a teacher or a student, and they can create those directly in their own account. So it comes as a kind of add-on. We've developed a website that you can go to thinglink.com forward slash Skybox that gives you all of the information. I was just gonna click another um, example, fantasy whilst we are just making sure Tallulah's not having an accident or something because she never, she never minds in webinars. She usually sits underneath the desk. Do you um, want to go check on her, Louise? Is, it, is everything all right? I think she's all right. She's just sniffing <laughs> the door to get all out. Right. Clearly had enough talk of AI. She kind of thinks that webinars are the dark arts when she sees people smiling <laughs> on the camera you, as well. You know what I really like? And, and just being kind of literally in the middle of, of two ed well two companies that of thing link and 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 uh blockade labs is i think that educators went away and and you, you could say this for any users i guess educators went away and and found hacks to 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 use two tools together and the companies listened and said you know what we want to make that easier for you we don't we don't want you to have to go right go over to this website export it download it then go over and every one of those kind of barriers could be barriers that turn people off especially i mean we, we have a lot of educators who who are scared of technology and, and 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 still need a lot of convincing around the importance of technology so each one of those steps can be potential barriers and the technology companies behind this listened to that and said, you know what, well, let's just remove all of those barriers and put those two tools together. And I think that it's quite inspiring. And it's great to know for, as, as an educator that that the, the companies want to make that journey easier and want to, to be easier for, for us to create um, amazing learning experiences. So, yeah, I just think that's it's great and i think more companies should be listening to to how educators are using their tools in that way 
I just put the slide on because um, I was going to mention it as, as earlier on, but I knew that we'd be fluid and flexible uh, today. But um, we've talked a lot about um, sort of digital storytelling and kind of how we might use those in a lesson, like bringing text to life, bringing text to life or um, putting the text in context was one of the things. But we're also seeing some of these other ideas that are bubbling up. And for Marguerite to see people starting to build their own games and point and click games, and there's kind of pick your own path adventure games. That's something that is just super easy to do, but also must be exciting for you to think there's a whole new generation of games designers that are, are, are springing up aided by, you know, what you've been able to, to create. Well, I think also just the, I mean, in that space, like you'll see somebody do something cool and it's really easy to then replicate that and iterate on it and push these ideas further and further uh, in, in that way, in that speed, better than ever. So I'm, I'm really excited to see with people who have a completely unbound creativity where they'll go with that. Like that, that to me is really exciting because even just in the game industry, we see people do really cool, um, almost there's almost a category of like games as art um yeah that, that are designed and their emotional human experiences that are really powerful and um and put you like put you in almost like moral positions of how you are experiencing this game you know not, they're not all just point and click shooters and so i think about the more storytelling we'll have in that format uh and where that will go so so i'm very excited about it i mean like roblox today has 66 million daily active users you know of people that just like to go on there and hang out together in these spaces and co-create. Um, so imagine, and it's not really that easy to use. Like the, the, uh, the platform itself is not, it's, you know, like we, my team who's pretty smart, they're looking at it and like, Oh, I'd like, this is really clunky. And, yeah. <laughs> and all these people are willing to like use that product. So yeah. Like if you can, how fast your ideas, we can get them out and you can play with your ideas. Oh, um, that's coming from. But um, yeah, and the other thing that I was just going to mention is that, you know, the 1984 kind of scenario um, that I showed, this is, you know, that kind of world. I, I, I like to think I'm creative, but I'm not really. I just kind of have ideas and then kind of run with them. But I was able to pretty quickly create a kind of game. And I, I went to ChatGPT saying, you know, could you designed a mini game on 1984. So I was able to use Mid Journey to create some of the characters. And there's actually, you know, a kind of talking character here. Welcome to the Ministry of Truth. Where and the idea is, is that this character is actually working in the Ministry of Truth and they're being asked to edit the history to align with the party's narrative. And this is in ThingLink Scenario Builder. You can click proceed and then there's, you know, a bit more information about what you're going to do. Um, and then I created, you know, where that game, uh, sorry, that role might be, where they went to work and it was looking pretty drab, etc. Click proceed again and then I've got the challenge and then you can decide what your kind of response would be. Would you, you know, go ahead and edit? Would you question or follow orders? And actually, you know, if you do follow orders, then you're a conformist and you kind of are, are compelled to spend the rest of your life kind of following orders. And, you know, I honestly, I'm not that creative and I was able to do this and that kind of storyboarding, you know, very, very quickly. I know that we're starting to kind of run out of time and there's so much um, stuff that I really wanted to just kind of, uh, you know, just kind of point out because I think it's really important. Um, just that those slides um, are in the deck and we've put together an email which you'll get after the webinar and all of those examples are going to be linked to the slides there. But this is what I really wanted to mention was that we've talked a lot about immersive learning and, and quite a few people have said, but, you know, what is immersive learning and, and why is it important? And this was my kind of stab to try and bring together the elements around the fact that we can now democratize the ability for anyone to create those kind of captivating contextual worlds. But why is immersive learning important? And 
for me and and having a background in you know inclusive digital learning particularly um it was this kind of multimodal approaches so together with skybox and thinglink you can read you've got immersive reader built into the text tags as well you can hear you've got that truly kind of immersive experience the tech integration but also accessibility as well you know for not just young people with different requirements but also the fact that you know it doesn't matter where you are you can access this anytime anywhere on any device and of course the outcomes that we know are starting to be evidenced as well so it's an evidence-based approach and i just kind of sat last night thinking about this and thought i'd try and put it together in one kind of image and i hope that kind of resonates i think i shared it with you dan yeah absolutely um I just yeah i think i keep coming back i think i said it yesterday when we met i want i want that phrase on a t-shirt the the text into context because i think <laughs> i think it's what it does i think i think sometimes the a lot of the challenges that we have as educators in 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 learning is is actually what the relevance the context behind what we're learning and let's be honest some of it might not have great context and then probably we need to think about what whether we do need to include that in the curriculum but we need to we need to set it in in a in a, in a relevant context for for any learner for anybody so that they they understand the motivation of why they need to to learn it or, or to give them the motivation for that um and i think this is where this kind of comes into its own really um and yeah i'm I, I just wish I know I've been out of the classroom for a, for a while now, and I just wish I was back in the classroom getting to use this. And there are, you know, what there's people in the chat at the moment. Um, what the first one that comes to mind is Tom Sale. Tom's been commenting a lot, and I was I had the privilege to be out in Dubai a few weeks ago, and I, I met up with Tom, and he works at a at a group of primary schools uh, over in Dubai, and he's running with this technology. He's really giving his students, um, young students as well in primary school. Uh, an experience of this technology and 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 changing their 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 world really potentially and and giving them the that that context that motivation and and the inspiring them to see what they can create as well so yeah i think there's for people in the chat as well looking for looking for support um everyone in the chat at the moment is is offering that and, and is able <laughs> to share ideas so uh yeah it's there's it's not i think this isn't, isn't just one thing where we go a flash in the pan when we go look what you can do but actually this is something that can be integrated and i think one of the ways is is what you showed just earlier there louise the fact that i don't think many people realize that there's assessment tools within thing link you can actually ask student questions and they can demonstrate mm -hmm. what they've learned and so this is not just a, a shiny toy this is this can be a robust learning experience that actually that that allows the teacher to measure progress if it's if it's used in the right way um and i'm quite excited to see where the people in the chat here and where educators around the world can actually take this because i think marguerite you said it earlier didn't you like you weren't ex you weren't expecting this to be a hit with with educators it was for a different market and i think even within the education realm we probably aren't even scratching on some of the possibilities and some of the areas and 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 the ways that educators could run with this and um that's what excites me i think the yeah. fact that a lot of a lot of generative ai we're limited by our own imagination and the more we work together with each other the more we can help to to enlighten each other of where where these tools can lead us yeah um, I, I wanted to just piggyback on this real quick was the another surprising use case um which I think is important to highlight for the education sector uh, is, is the healing side of the product. So it's being used in therapeutics and oh, wow. uh, for in-person in healing recovery or mental health. Um, it's It's gotten a lot of traction there with uh, various startups focusing in that space. And so like, not only can it be powerful for education, but the whole creation experience, creating is a very positive healing exercise that we can, you know, extra, like have these outlets, learn about um, places to funnel, you know, our feelings and um, and also create spaces for like some of our users will write in and be like, it's just a really relaxing experience for me. Um, and I do it for fun. So I think that in an understanding that creativity has these powerful, positive 
um, side effects that come with it. It's really good skills for the for students to learn. I'm going to have to start saying we've got about a minute left, <laughs> but I wanted to call out that Marguerite, you um, supplied us with a really great uh, tip sheet of how to create the best prompts for Skybox. It's linked in this slide that we'll send out to everyone. So please do click on that and you'll see the blog post that we put together. Uh, the last thing, uh, we've got our prize draw as well. The next webinar though is in a week's time, webinar Wednesday, and we're gonna be doing a masterclass on ThingLink Scenario Builder. And I think that's probably a good time for us to do our prize draw. So I'm gonna bring Kyla back on to the screen. Hi, Kyla, how are you? Have you got all the entries there? I have, I've got them all in front of me and we've got 44. So actually it's any number between two and 45. Okay, so Marguerite, any number between two and 45 for a Skybox account? Let's go with 30. 30. 30, okay, let me scroll down. Number 30 is Jason Cobham. Hey, well done, Jason. Fantastic. We'll be um, about that. And then another one, uh, Dan, a number. Yeah, uh, unlucky for some, but not this person, number 13. Ooh, uh, it's Joe. Joe. Joe Loss. Hey, I know Joe. Excellent. This is winging its way to Essex. Amazing. I will put it in the post to you. And the last one for a ThingLink account. And we'll add Skybox in. <laughs> oh, who's picking right. the number for this one? Oh, me. Uh, uh, number 20. 20 is Sarah D. Excellent. Fantastic. Congratulations to all of those winners. And it's just left for me to say, I can't thank you enough, Marguerite, for joining us all the way from Vegas. It's been such an honor to hear all of your thoughts and the background and i'm really excited to see where this goes and dan or as always an amazing co-host thanks ever so much for joining us thank you very much if you didn't win a book they're, they're readily available <laughs> on amazon i'm just saying that uh, in case anyone's interested have we got time for a simpsons impression that's what i want to know <laughs> no i can't Tyler's know. like I dan go away running out of time <laughs> 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 you know next time and you'll hear it man. Yeah. Straight, really straight after this, Kyla's, Kyla's going to email Louise and be like, can we please not invite Dan onto any more of these webinars, please? <laughs> Have a really wonderful rest of your day, evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We can't wait. Do keep in touch. You'll get the email. You can hit reply to the email if you want to keep in touch with us. People's social media accounts are linked on the slides as well, uh, Twitter or X for uh, a coin artist and the AI educator as well. So thanks everyone, take care, and uh, we can't wait to see you soon. You can all stay on. <laughs> <laughs>